Hey guys, good morning. Today on Vintage Speed Garage, we're going to be replacing the universal joints on the drive shaft from our 66 Mustang project here. We've got the motor slung into place, the cross member bolted up, the uh, e brake cables all connected, everything's ready to go on the motor. We're just waiting for our new aluminum radiator so that we can fire that up and break in that camshaft. So while we're waiting, we're taking care of some of the other items that need to be replaced. And when uh, when I did the initial inspection uh, underneath this 66 Mustang, one of the things that I noted that was bad was one of the universal joints on the drive shaft. And I'm going to show you guys how to check the play in your U-joints and do the replacement. We're going to be replacing both universal joints. Um, this car sat for a long period of time and the needle bearings most likely are dented from sitting in one position for so long. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and replace both universal joints. Okay guys, so what we've got here is one of the universal joints for our 66 Mustang project. In this case, this is our front universal joint. It's your standard light duty. You can get joints uh, in 1310, 1330, 1350 is a one ton size universal joint. 1410s are a little bit beefier than a 1350, uh, 1510s, uh, and it just keeps going up the scale. They make universal joints in huge sizes for uh, big earth movers and whatnot. But the most common sizes that we use in automotive world are 1310s, 1350s in some situations where you're putting down a lot of horsepower and you want a nice big beefy universal joint. Uh, they have four caps here. Uh, what these do is uh, sit in, this being our front universal joint, two of the ears would sit into our slip yoke that goes into our transmission and the other two would go into the drive shaft. Uh, and this is, allows the yoke on the front of our drive shaft to pivot up and down. Um, as as the drive shaft rotates. So these caps here are bearings. Okay, they contain needle bearings and what the needle bearings do is allows the cap to rotate and twist and while the drive shaft's spinning it can it can run at a at an offset angle uh, without binding up. That's the whole point of universal joint. Universal joints are used primarily in drive shafts, also in front axle shafts on four wheel drives. Uh, there are different series of universal joint because the dimensions are different. Um, but basically, uh, you run 760s in the front of a, of a standard uh, three-quarter or one-ton, like a Dana 60 would use a 760 style U-joint. A different number designation for the different dimensions of the universal joint. The driveline joint is held in place with four C-clips. And the C-clips will uh, slip onto the ears or the onto the caps of the universal joint once you put it into place on the uh, on the yoke and on the drive shaft. So the main components of universal joint are the bearing caps. Okay, These are a sealed cap. In this case it uses a rubber seal. Um, the older style, this, this one is for the rear of our drive shaft. It's basically the same size universal joint but the caps are a little bit larger here where it goes onto the yokes on the rear axle. Uh, but these are sealed with a cork seal. This is an OEM original style universal joint. Um, and it's an OEM part. So that's how they did it back then in the 60s and 70s. And uh, nowadays we use rubber, rubber seals. Inside the cap we have a row of roller bearings. These are called needle bearings. And I'll pull one out here. It's basically just a small metal roller that uh, that the bearing that, that sits between the cap and the body of the uh, or the trunnion of the center of the universal joint. Okay, and this this rolls here, and they they roll around the trunnion, and that's what forms our bearing surface. Uh, they're greased, and the grease basically holds them into the cap. Um, so if you take your universal joint apart like I just did, and your bearings fall all over the place because the grease is dried up and it's all rusted in there. Um, take them out, clean them up real good, and uh, all you need to do is throw a little grease in there and run your finger around and you should be able to put them back into place pretty easily. Fight me a little bit. Find the spot that one goes in. Just kind of run it around in there. And now our needle bearing is back into place, no harm, no foul, ready to go back on. This is a, a basic stock replacement style universal joint. 
uh, it has a grease fitting or a zerk fitting uh, and a grease channel that runs into all four trunnions on the uh, on the universal body itself. This these grease passages, however, you can see that it's hollow inside all the way through, and that's the the passageway for grease to get to those needle bearings inside the caps. Now that's great for maintenance and for light duty use, uh, but Having these passages inside the universal joint means that the joint is not solid. Um, and it's a weak point, and that's normally where a universal joint will break. It'll crack right through one of those oil passages and snap the ear right off of the trunnion. So you can get solid universal joints that are upgraded that don't have uh, any of these oil passages. And basically the trunnion or the center of the universal joint is one solid billet chunk of steel. Um, and in some cases they even use three, uh, 300M or some other um, exotic steel alloys to, uh, to make super heavy duty trunnions um, that are much stronger than a stock, uh, stock trunnion and still have the same dimensions uh, to fit into that stock uh, drive shaft that you have. These style roller bearing uh, universal joints you know, can last a long time with very minimal maintenance. Uh, as long as you have a basic amount of grease in there, it's going to last last you a long time, and it's not going to wear out as as quickly as a solid bushing wood. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this back together here and put it into our drive shaft. Now I'm going to I'm going to use two different methods um, for putting the drive shaft together, taking the universal joints out of the old. Uh, taking the old universal joints out of the drive shaft and putting in the new ones. Um, a lot of guys like to beat them out of there. That's how I've always done it. I've changed a lot of U-joints on the trail. And most of the time you have a big freaking sledgehammer and a rock. And that's uh, and a couple sockets and that's what you use to change them out on the trail. So that's pretty much how I've always changed out universal joints. But a lot of guys like to be a little more refined and have a, have a better method for changing these out. Um, and we're going to try both ways. We're going to also use the vise and push them out, press press the universal joint apart, press the new one back into position, and uh, see what works best for you. They do make tools for this. They make universal joint presses that you can buy uh, that makes the job a little bit easier. But swinging a hammer isn't too hard. Most of us garage monkeys can figure that out and, uh, and take apart a universal joint with a few swings in the hammer. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cleaned up the uh, drive shaft here in the solvent tank. And wouldn't you know it, with a little bit of scrubbing, our original factory paint stamp part number is visible. So I've got uh, the U-joint here rigged up in the vise. We're going to use the vise method here to remove our rear universal joint. And then on the other end, I'm going to go ahead and beat it out, which is the way I normally remove a U-joint. I'm going to show you both methods here. So what I've done is taken two sockets that I don't like very much. This one here is an 11 16 and this is uh, just a big inch and an eighth socket that I had cut down. It was a deep well that I had to shorten. So uh, I've just got the cutoff end here to catch the universal joint cap as I push it through. And we're going to go ahead and crank on the old arm here and uh, use that as a press use the vise as a press to press our universal joint out of the yoke ears on the end of our drive shaft here. I removed the uh, grease zerk fitting that uh, was in our universal joint here uh, so that it doesn't catch on the ear as I push the universal joint through. Move you guys up a little further so you can see as we press this apart. So I'm just going to crank on the arm here. You can see that the universal joint is moving. The cap is starting to come through the ear. There we go. And with just a few cranks, we pop the, uh, pop the joint free here. So I pushed this this cap all the way through the ear here on our drive shaft, which frees the other side of the cap, and you can see it's uh, bleeding rust here from the diesel fuel solvent tank bath. 
and now we can lift it up cock it out of our drive shaft looks like our ears are good you want to make sure that you select the right size sockets for your pitcher and catcher so that you can clear the cap you, you have the right size here to push on the small end of the cap and big enough diameter to catch the opposite side uh, when you push it through if your sockets are the wrong size and you're pushing against your sockets you could snap the ear off your drive shaft so be careful with that okay so with our rear axle universal joint removed from the drive shaft now we've got to remove the front slip yoke uh, u-joint here I'm gonna go ahead and mark the ears so that when I reinstall the new universal joint I get the slip yoke back in the same exact orientation and don't introduce any new vibrations into our driveline you can see here after a little bit of cleaning in the solvent tank how bad this front universal joint is it's really thrashed there's no needle bearings left in this cap here so I'm going to use the same uh, pitcher and catcher here that I used on the vise get the ear into position that you're going to press into put our small socket here on the top and proceed to beating the shit out of it okay take two here we've got a more substantial block of wood here to uh, beat against making sure that my catching socket is clearing the u-joint all the way around the cap of the u-joint that's coming through here at the bottom my small universal or my small socket on the top cap of the universal joint and give it a few good good wax there we go just like that You can see the inside of that cap is just rusted rusted on there really good okay so now that you've slung needle bearings all over your garage like I just did pulling that cap off uh, let's get this opposite side of the cross here pushed out give it a few good whacks. Now when you get good at this, it really only takes a couple whacks. If, if the U-joint you're removing isn't completely rusted out and seized up like these are, uh, these are really beat to hell. Um, a normal universal joint, a couple whacks with a hammer and pushes right out, no problem. There's one. There we go. That side is uh, a little bit better that's normally how they come out of there okay so I've cleaned up the ears here on our drive shaft and on our slip yoke uh, made sure there's nothing no burrs in here that are gonna snag our new universal joint caps when we go to put this back together uh, I've marked the drive shaft and the slip yoke so I know which orientation it goes back into place you want to make sure that you Put the slip yoke back on the front of the drive shaft, not on the tail end of the drive shaft. It's possible to get that reversed because the ears and the universal joint sizes are the same on both ends of the drive shaft. So you want to make sure that you mark it and you get it back together the same way it came apart so you don't get any new vibrations that you didn't have before uh, you changed out your universal joint. Now when we put the joint in, uh, there's really no particular orientation that it goes in uh, on this joint anyway. Uh, because all four caps are the same size, the uh, width is the same both directions. There are some universal joints such as our rear joint that's going to go on the other end of our drive shaft that has larger caps to go on the axle end, uh, the ears of the uh, axle on the pinion yoke. But in this case on our front one, all four caps are the same so you can't get it wrong. Um, I've removed the grease zerk to make it easier to install because I'm going to be beating this into place. Um, if you if you do a lot of off-roading like I do it's good to stay in practice with this um, 
so that when you do have to change a universal joint out on the trail on the side of a on the side of a rock canyon or something and all you have is a couple pieces of slab to hit it on and a, and a hammer and a couple old sockets well that's really all you need to change out the joint uh, I'm going to install the joint first into the drive shaft and then install the slip yoke onto the joint so that um, there's less flopping around if I was to do it the other way and put it in the slip yoke first then the drive shaft would be moving around on me a lot as I was trying to get the get the uh, universal joint caps to slide into the ears here on the drive shaft. I'm going to take all four caps off, just give them a twist and a pull and they come right out. Okay, so we take the body of our universal joint or trunnion and put it here into one of the ears on our drive shaft and start the cap. You want to make sure you hold the trunnion up into position as you tap this cap into the drive shaft. Oh no, that's not good. Well guys, we hit a little bit of a stumbling block here in ins installing uh, our front universal joint into our drive shaft. Um, for whatever reason, the caps on this universal joint are too small. Um, I've checked them against the caps uh, that came out of the yokes on our drive shaft. And these are significantly smaller. And that's not going to work. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and install our rear universal joint. I've checked the caps. They do fit the ears on our drive shaft, so I'm going to go ahead and beat that into position. Okay guys, so we've got the rear of our drive shaft here now uh, that I'm going to install our rear universal joint on. I'm going to use the, the hammer method and beat it into place here. For those of you guys who may not have a shop press or you may not have a vise, um, you can still change out your universal joints. You don't need, uh, you don't need a vise or, or, or a press to do your universal joints. Okay, so take your trunnion, slip it into your joint, and what you want to do is hold the trunnion up against the ear when you put the cap on. Because we're going to need to hit this, tap this cap into the ear of our drive shaft, and uh, you have to you want to hold the trunnion into the cap so that our needle bearings don't just scatter everywhere if I let this fall down and I hit that cap uh, the all the needle bearings inside this cap are just gonna spread all over the floor here and we're gonna lose them there we go. okay now once you get your cap almost seated here into the ear you want to flip it over. I'm still maintaining pressure against that cap I just put into the opposite ear so that we don't lose any of our bearings. Take the other small cap. So I'm just going to try and float the trunnion in between both caps so that I can hold those bearings into position. Just kind of float it in between. Give it one good whack. Okay, so at this point we've got this cap mostly seated. We've got this one almost all the way down. It's still got to come down a little bit. But I want to put our clip on this bottom cap first before we uh, go any further with this uh, cap. And once our clip is fully seated on the shoulder, then we can... Uh, consider the joint installed all the way and put the clip on the opposite cap. And to make sure it's seated, you just want to rotate it a little bit from the opposite side here, make sure it's in the in the land. Okay, now we can push this U-joint the rest of the way through and seat that clip onto the shoulder. And once that clip is fully seated on the shoulder, then we know that we have the U-joint all the way down in uh, to the ears. So to do that, I'll just take my cheapo socket here, give it a tap, and that feels pretty good. 
So now we can put our second clip into place. You can tell if you take the clip and put it into its land, or try to put it into its land on the opposite ear and it won't go in, then that means that the cap isn't far enough inside the U-joint yet, or uh, the cap isn't far enough inside the ear. All right, now we have a nice tight universal joint here in the ears of our drive shaft. We'll take the uh, remaining two caps. We can put these on now and then uh, tape them into place so that they don't fall off and lose all the needle bearings inside the caps. You don't want to leave the caps on here when you're beating a universal joint into, into submission because uh, if you leave the cap on here as you hit the universal joint the cap will fall off and uh, scatter your needle bearings everywhere. And just tape your caps on if you're not going to install it right away so you don't lose your caps or your needle bearings. Okay guys, so there you go. That's how you install a U-joint without a vise. If you happen to be broke down on the side of the road and you snap a U-joint or you're on the on the trail off-roading and you snap a U-joint on the front axle or or even a drive line, uh, that's how you can replace it. All you need is a couple sacrificial sockets uh, and a BFH and some determination and you can beat, beat that universal joint uh, into position. On our Mustang here, we ran into a bit of a stumbling block with our replacement uh, universal joint here for our front slip yoke. So I've got a new one on order. Once that comes in, I'll go ahead and swap that out. I'll just be using the bench vise and taking the easy route on that one. And it's a good thing we ended up replacing uh, both universal joints because, as you can see from the cap here, uh, there's nothing left of the needle bearings inside this cap. They are completely disintegrated and uh, pulverized into, into metal powder there on that cap and this other cap is not much better um, you can see the rust here on the trunnion on the bearing surfaces it's just completely had it was completely worn out when I did my initial inspection and that's why I ordered replacement U-joints uh, when I looked the car over the first time uh, and I knew we were going to have to replace those so that's how you do it. It's not too difficult. If you use the vise, it's much easier, but uh, swinging the hammer is a little bit satisfying anyway. Uh, for me today, guys, that's it. So just a quick video on U-joint replacement and two different methods that I used, the vise and the hammer. Uh, so however you choose to do it, good luck. Remember not to lose those needle bearings. Support those uh, the trunnion up into the cap of those bearings, and you should do just fine. So for me here at Vintage Speed Garage, guys, thank you for watching. If you're new, please click subscribe. We've got a lot of more content coming up on the uh, 66 Mustang project here. We've got a ton of stuff on the OBS projects. Kevin is about to do that hydro boost, so you want to stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks for watching.